All right, so spreadsheets have a concept called named ranges. And what it is is just the ability to give a range. So we'll say this area here, a nickname that makes a little bit more sense. So we're going to go through how and why you would do this. And we'll show some examples using this made up inventory of grocery store back in the warehouse where you happen to have a lot of citrus fruit. So we're looking at a list of how many oranges that we have listed by variety, how many lemons and how many grapefruit, grapefruits. Yeah, I don't know. And you'll notice one thing different about the grapefruit is that there's no price per each and therefore no total. And that's on purpose. We're going to use a name range uh, to do that in a unique way later in this video. And while we're working on this, you can get a copy of this template. If you go to the website that's listed in the description, sheetshelp.com, you'll be able to just click get a free copy of this. And so you can work through these examples and see how exactly how it was done in this video. One of the more common reasons that you'd want to use a named range is if you're referencing back and forth between different worksheets. So if I go down to the bottom, there's two worksheets in this file. You can see them both down here. If you click on them, it goes back and forth. So we're going to head over to sheet two and we'll delete these, delete this little guy here. And we're going to be counting the items on sheet one from sheet two. So we'll just do this the quote unquote regular way first and you'll see some of the pain points. We'll be counting the number of varieties of oranges. So we use the count a function that just counts the number of values in the range. And without a named range, we'll have to go over to the other worksheet, click and drag to select this range, close it off with the parentheses. All right, so we got it done and it's accurate. So it's saying that there's eight of them there. And if I double click in it, we'll see you can also type it out, uh, but we're going to copy this range. And for the inventory count, we're using the word count there, but we really want to sum the number of items to get the count. So we'll, let's paste this range in there again. And we'll backspace a little bit. I wanted to show you that to designate another sheet, if you're using a regular cell reference, you have to type out the name of the sheet followed by an explanation point and then grab the reference. So let's look over here. Uh, the quantities are in B, so we'll say B5 to B12, and we'll just type this this time. It got impatient, hold on. And we'll say B5 to B12. All right, it's doable, right? It's not the end of the world, but it is a little bit clunky. And when you look at it, it's hard to read. You're not gonna tell someone, yes, I summed sheet one explanation point B5 to B12, right? Uh, but we'll do one more just to round it off and then we'll show you the easier way uh, when we get to the lemons. So the cost, we'll try to do a bit of a shortcut here. We'll copy this formula again, come over here and just change the Bs to Ds. It works, but it's a little bit clunky, right? So when we move to the lemons, what we're going to do is we're going to proactively name the ranges before we start. So let's go over to sheet one. And what we want to pick up, we want to pick up this range for the number of varieties. We want to pick up this range for the count of the total items sold and this for the dollars, right? See, this is uh, needs to be dragged down here. All right, so we want to name this range. We'll call it variety. And Google Sheets recently added the name box up here. You previously had to do it all on the right, which I'll show you in a minute. We'll call this variety. And I'm purposely making one mistake here in one, let's just say a uh, way that I could have done it better. So there's two things that we'll come back to and talk about, but for now we will call that variety. We will call this quantity, quantity. We get that extra T in there, uh, total. And now's a, probably a good time to open up the menu of the named ranges. That comes up here on the right. I can left click on quantity and uh, see where it is. It frames it for you. And if you forget the names, they're listed here as well. And you can make changes. So if you click on edit, you can go back and change the name or the range. But for now, we're going to use these, right? Quantity, total, and variety. Let's go over to sheet two. And to get the number of quantities, instead of doing K 
count a and then that ugly reference we will do count a and just type in variety so I put in the first letter and you can see it's still acting like it normally does where it assumes you're writing out the name of a function but it also brings named ranges into this list so you had called it variety it's right here you could continue typing and it will narrow it down uh, but it knows what it is it's even showing you the definition of the named range here let's left click on this to complete it and that's all we need to do so we will close that off with the parentheses and we get the count of the number of varieties so we'll go over and check it there are 10 of them i see the count 10 down here in the lower right hand corner so that's working we'll do the inventory count we'll steal this although it's not very hard to type out some it's a little bit confusing here i use the word count but if we really just use the count function Every item would be one, no matter what the number is. So we're using a sum to get the count. This is the named range called quantity. Enter, and then we want to do a sum in this case of total. Now a better word for that name range might be total price. And we can fix that in this next section because what I want to show you here is the value of naming your ranges with as much information as possible from the beginning. So if you're going to be using a lot of ranges, you want to beef up the names a little bit. Instead of using just variety for the lemons, you probably want to call this one variety lemons, right? Or lemon variety. And that way, when you come to grapefruit, you can just call it grapefruit variety. So let's just use the named range manager for this. This one's quantity. Let's call it lemon. And you can't have spaces in named ranges. So we'll do an underscore. Uh, while we're here talking about this, you also can't start it with a number. And it can't be something like G5. Uh, so it can't be the same way that you would actually use a cell reference. That might be kind of obvious, but in case it's not. You can't have the words true or false in them and stay away from special characters like uh, punctuation so we'll say lemon quantity of well, the total here we'll say lemon total and then i'm going to add the word price even though it's not in the header and then the variety we will say lemon variety all right so now that we're still on this page we will add the grapefruit variety, which will be this, we can just highlight it and do add name range and we'll say grapefruit variety, grapefruit quantity. So now you see there's two ways that you can add this range. Do you know that before when I highlighted this, I just went over here and clicked in it and renamed it. You can see the name is coming through uh, over here now too. So either way, whatever works best for you. And this is where we left off the price. Okay, so we will just do these five. Could come back and name the orange also, but for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just leave those as is. We'll close the name manager, come back to sheet two. So the number of varieties here will be the same, right? So let's just copy the count A, or we'll be arrived at this in this similar fashion, I should say. Uh, we'll copy the formula and then we will go into it and just start typing the different named range. It's down here. Click on that, great for variety. Hit enter, there we go, nice and easy. Now we can do the count also. When we get to the cost, we're going to go into another concept. All right, now for the cost, you'll notice that I don't have that column and we're going to act like there is a uh, a variable cost and you need to reference another cell for it so we're going to say grapefruit you know, it's special it has a market price right so it can fluctuate up and down right now we'll say it's uh, 956 why don't we but we're going to call this and we'll just do it in the name box market price and then when you come to the inventory cost what we can do we hit the equal sign we're going to 
just reference C17 here for the count. And then we will multiply it by, and we can just type out market price. Okay, now, because that cell is just right here, you might not necessarily need to do it this way, but it's just to illustrate how you can use one fixed cell, give it a good name, and then when it changes, it'll be apparent that it's changing because it's market price. So you've given it a descriptive name to indicate what it is. And if you copy this down, we'll just copy this down, actually, before we do it, we will fix the reference to C17 by putting a dollar sign before the 17. And we will copy this formula down one. Let me get the currency sign before I do that. Just indicate that we're working in dollars. Put the currency sign on the price too. Okay, we'll copy this down one. And it still works, so I'll explain why this works. One is we fix the 17, so it stays there. And that's on the subject of relative and fixed cell references. But I'm putting this into this video because market price is working the same way. All right, so when you copy a formula, if there are named ranges in it, they don't shift. So market price still means cell E16 like it did when I first created it. All right, so we'll delete that. And then one other thing we can do. So you see there's eight varieties here on the grapefruits. Grapefruit, grapefruits. And let's add another one. Let's say we want, uh, what's a good name for grapefruit? How about um, Rainmaker? Sure. And we'll, we'll just say we have two of them. There were eight before. If we come back here, there's still eight. Right? And that's because the way that we define the named range. And I'll show you a way that we can work around that. It's not perfect, but you may find it helpful. Let's go back to the name manager. And what you could do in a typical formula, this is grapefruit variety. You could come into the cell range. You see how it doesn't go all the way down anymore because Rainmaker was added. You could just get rid of this 12 and it would go all the way down to the bottom. So this type of cell reference would start in K5 and then just go to K infinity, but that doesn't work. If I click done, it just makes it 1007. So that may be big enough, but that's just the uh, lower limit of the size of the spreadsheet right now. So if I go all the way down, it's 1007. But if you come here and you add 1000 rows to 2007, this no longer touches the bottom. So that may cause problems when you're working with name ranges. So let's go back up to the top. And the workaround for this is that, well, you could consider this a workaround if you know you're not gonna have that many rows. But what you could also do is you have to take the five off as well and the ending row number. So take off the beginning row and the end. And if I click done now, it goes all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. So if you're going to use this, you have to be careful because if you're doing something like count A, it's going to count this word and it's going to count the grapefruit as well. But if you did that on quantity and you were summing it, the, the actual text, the word of quantity would not sum as anything. So it would work on a lot of uh, mathematical functions, but it would actually throw off a count A if you had headers above it. So depending on what you're doing, this type of a named range may work. Or the way that we constructed this, the way it would work the best is if we had it on a range like the quantity. Let's take a look at, we want to pick up two more on the sum on the count. Right now it's 98. If we updated this, to not have the row numbers and click done, it picks up quantity, which we really don't want, but it's okay because you come back and it's 100. If you highlight all of these, that's 100. So that works with the sum function. Now, I usually stay away from named ranges in most of my tutorials because they're very handy, but they just open up this other explanation of how to use them. So you don't see them very often, at least in the videos that I do, but they are a best practice, especially if you're working between worksheets. If you like that tutorial, please subscribe to the Sheets Help YouTube channel. You'll see a lot of other videos just like this one. Thanks for watching. It's good to have you along.